myself Dr. B. J. D. Kalyani, working as Associate Professor in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering of Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. In this video, I will discuss about auxiliary memory or secondary storage devices. At the end of this video, the student will gain knowledge regarding what is auxiliary memory, what are various secondary storage devices, what are its types and features and the comparison between various categories of auxiliary memory devices. The basic agenda of this video is introduction, what is auxiliary memory, what are available types under the category of auxiliary memory, the comparison between various categories. Basically, the memory unit can be used to store user programs and data. During processing of the program, if any intermediate results are produced and the output produced can also be stored in the memory unit. So, the design issues that can be considered during memory unit is how to keep up the CPU processing speed with the memory. So, the synchronization of speeds between memory and CPU it can be the major design issue. Was the memory capacity is sufficient to store the user programs and data and how to provide inexpensive, reliable and energy efficient memory devices to the user. These are the basic design issues that can be considered during the memory design. So, here memory unit basically used for storage purpose. Two resistors that can be associated with the memory unit for accessing is MAR and MDR. MAR stands for memory address resistor which can hold the address of the memory locations. Memory is a collection of continuous storage cells. Each cell can be assigned a unique number that is generally referred as memory address. So, the location of the memory the address can be stored in the MAR register and on the memory two operations are generally permitted to perform that is either read operation or the write operation. So, the data that is going to be uh, operated uh, while performing read and write operations can be stored in the MDR register, memory data register and the System bus is the major uh, communication path between the processor and memory. So, here the system bus comprises of three buses, address bus, data bus and control bus. Address bus is used to carry out the memory address. So, if there are k bits that is the width of the address bus, then the address space, the storage capacity of the memory can be up to 2 power k addressable locations are available in the memory. And the data that is uh, used for read and write operations can be available in the MDR register and if there are n bits is the width of the data bus, then the word length, the number of bits per word can be equivalent to the n bits. And to indicate which type of operation can be performed on the memory can be recognized with the control lines, read and write lines and MFC is memory function complete to acknowledge the completion of the read and write operation. These signals can be traversed with the help of the control lines. What is the basic classification of the memory? The memory is majorly divided into primary memory and the secondary memory or auxiliary memory. So, primary memory is comprises of cache memory, random access memory and read only memory. Cache is a high speed memory and it is very small size that can be placed between the processor and the memory. And the frequently accessed data or frequently referred data by the CPU can be generally stored in the cache memory. 
So the speed of accessing data can be high during the cache memory. The RAM is having the direct connection with the CPU and it is of two types, static RAM and the dynamic RAM. In the RAM, the user can perform both read operation as well as the write operation. But the RAM is a volatile memory. That is, the content of the memory can get erased when a power interruption occurs or the user can switch off the computer. And the next category of main memory is the ROM, read-only memory. Here, ROM is non-volatile memory and only the user can perform the read operation. The varieties of ROM are PROM, EPROM, e square PROM or EEPROM. On the other hand, the secondary or auxiliary memory is the basic category. Under that, we are having a variety of auxiliary memory that is magnetic tape, magnetic disk, which is further classified into hard disk drive, floppy disk drive. The third variety of auxiliary memory is the optical disk that is again categorized into CD, DVD, VRD and HVD. The fourth category under secondary storage devices is the flash memory, memory card and pen drive comes under this category. We will look into the basic features of these devices in this video. How these devices, the types of memory, how it can be connected. So this is the main memory and this is the central processing unit. In between main memory and CPU, a small high speed memory can be connected. That memory is the cache memory. And this is the auxiliary memory that can be provided with magnetic tapes and magnetic disks. These devices can be connected to the main memory with the help of IO processor. So the auxiliary memory devices can be connected with the main memory with the help of IO processor. The primary memory can have direct connection with the CPU. That's why it is called as central memory. So the primary memory holds data and the programs that are needed by the CPU for the execution. The main memory consists of RAM, which is available in two forms, that is static RAM as well as dynamic RAM. The primary memory again further divided into RAM RAM. RAM is volatile in nature and here the read and write operation can be allowed to perform and two varieties are SRAM and DRAM. Next is ROM. ROM full form is read only memory and it is non-volatile in nature. That means the content of the memory cannot be erased when a power interruption occurs or the user switch off the computer. Whenever the system is switched on, the system can execute post power on self-test. During the execution of the post, the computer can check whether all devices are properly connected or not and it can load the bootstrap program uh, to execute, which will in turn load the operating system into the computer. So if at all this bootstrap program is stored in the RAM, it is of uh, volatile nature. So whenever the user switched off the computer, the bootstrap program can get erased and again, when switched on the uh, system by the user, the bootstrap loader cannot be available so that the system cannot be uh, booting and cannot be ready to work with the user or to perform the intended task. That's why the bootstrap loader is generally stored on the ROM. So it is a non-volatile nature. The content cannot erased 
whenever power interruption occur or the user switched out the system. So ROM is majorly used to store the bootstrap loader. This another way can be refer referred as firmware. You know the two categories of the basic components of the computer that is hardware and software. Hardware generally uh, deals with the physical equipment of the computer. Software is collection of programs that can be retained to perform the intended functionality or to solve a specific objective. Here the mm, ROM is a chip. It is comes under the category of hardware. And bootstrap loader is a program. So it comes under the category of software. So the combination of hardware and software is generally referred as firmware. So ROM chip is a hardware that is loaded with the software bootstrap loader. So it can be generally referred as firmware. And there are variety of ROM chips are available. MROM means mask read-only memory. PROM means programmable read-only memory. EEPROM means erasable programmable read-only memory. EEPROM means electrically erasable programmable read-only memory. Flash e flash memories is the another category of ROM. Here. The user can read the data, but whenever user want to perform the right operation, that can be possible with during the construction of the chip itself. So the manufacturing time only the program can be stored in the ROM chip. And it can be erasable in some categories of the ROM with the help of ultraviolet lens or electrical signals. So depending upon the number of erasures that can be supported, the program can be altered in the ROM with the help of special signals of ultraviolet rays or electrical signals. Now what are the auxiliary storage devices? What is auxiliary memory? The storage capacity of main memory is very limited. So, the size can be very limited. So, it is necessary to store the hundreds of millions of bytes of data of the CPU to process to execute the user programs. The user programs can be of big size. Uh, therefore, additional memory is required in all for the computer system. To extend the internal storage capacity of the computer, the auxiliary memory can be used. So that's why this memory is called auxiliary memory or secondary storage. So here in this type of memory, the cost per bit of storage is low. So the it is very inexpensive memory. However, the operating speed is slower than when compared to the primary memory. So, so we, whenever the user want to store a program in the auxiliary memory, for example, you can consider it is the hard disk. In this, the user program can be loaded. And this is the computer or the CPU under that we are having the primary memory. So, in order to execute the user programs, first it has to be loaded from secondary storage to the main memory so that the program and data can be readily available with the CPU and can get executed. So, this is the auxiliary storage devices. What are the various types of auxiliary storage devices? Magnetic tapes, magnetic disks, floppy disks, hard disks and drives are various varieties of the secondary storage devices. So we are having variety of storage devices. 
how they are arranged. So here that is specified with the help of the memory hierarchy. CPU resistors are very small in size but are high speed. Next L1, L2, L3 are the cache memory and are uh, slower than the CPU resistors but higher faster than the main memory DRAM. Next category is the main memory. Below that secondary memory devices can be placed. They are of large volume. The latency persistence can be from top to bottom and performance endurance cost per unit can be increased while traversing from bottom to top. So the memory hierarchy is to obtain the highest possible access speed while minimizing the total cost of the memory system. The access time can be increased with the distance from CPU and the cost per bit is decreased with the distance from CPU. So based on these features, the memory hierarchy can be developed. And these are the varieties of the auxiliary memory devices. Under magnetic storage, we are having the hard disk drives, floppy disk, magnetic tape. Under the category of optical storage, CD, DVD, Blu-ray disc. Under category of flash storage, pen drives, scan disc are the flash storage. So these are the varieties of the auxiliary storage devices. Now what is magnetic tape? Magnetic tape is a medium for magnetic recording. Made up of thin magnetizable coating on a long narrow script of plastic film. So like a tape recorder cassette, the magnetic tape can have the long narrow strip of plastic film which is a coating with the magnetized material. So this film can be used for recording of data or information. Magnetic tape and information storage medium consisting of magnetic coating and a flexible backing in tape form. Data is recorded by magnetic encoding of tracks on the coating according to a particular tape format. Data encoding can be done with the help of magnetic um, on the magnetic material. It was developed in Germany. And these devices that record and play back audio video using the magnetic tape. Generally, magnetic tapes can be used for batch processing. In the batch processing, the user uh, want to execute a program. All these tasks can be collected as a batch and can be executed at a one batch. During that time, the magnetic tapes are used. This is the layout of the magnetic tape. So here the thin plastic film can be available which is the IA magnetic coating. By using some encoding techniques, the record of data can be done on this magnetic plastic film. What is the disadvantages or major characteristics of the magnetic tape? Here, the sequential access can be possible. No direct access, but very fast sequential access. That means the information can be accessed one after another in a sequence. No random accessing can be available. For example, if student information is used to store on this magnetic tape, the 100 student information the student roll number, name, marks are stored on this magnetic tape. Then the magnetic tape can be used to access the information, student roll number 1, 2, 3 and so on until the 100. If the user want to access 20, 20th student record directly, it won't be possible in case of magnetic tape. Resistant to different environment conditions but easy to transport store cheaper than the disk. But the storage storing of a bit 
for this medium will be very low and it is a inexpensive medium magnetic tapes were widely used to store application data nowadays are mostly used for backups and archives so whenever uh, the territory storage is required for backup this magnetic tape is uh, uh, inexpensive medi medium for storage that's why these can be used as territory storage purpose what is the advantages of this magnetic tape the magnetic tape is compact a 10 inch diameter reel of tape is of 2400 feet long and is able to hold 800 1600 6250 characters in e in each inch of its length the maximum capacity can be 180 million characters the data is stored much more compact than the tape and it is economical the cost of the storing characters on the tape is very less as compared to other storage devices and fast copying of data is easier and fast long term storage and reusability magnetic tapes can be used for long term storage and can be used repeatedly without loss of data so that's why these devices are majorly used for batch processing applications and they can be preferred for territory storage or for backups next variety of auxiliary memory is magnetic disk magnetic disk rotates with very high speed inside the disk drive data are stored on both the surface of the disk magnetic disk are most popular for direct access storage so random accessing can be possible in case of magnetic disk each disk consists of a number of invisible concentric circuits called the tracks information is recorded on the tracks of disk surface in the form of tiny magnetic spots and this is the layout of the magnetic disk so here on the disk a thin concentric circuits can be available those can be called as tracks on both the surface of the disk the information can be recorded with the help of this is called the read write head so here the disk can be rotated under this read write head position can be used to record the data or read data from the disk the presence of the magnetic spot represents one bit and is absence represents the zero bit the information stored in the disk can be read many times without affecting the stored data so reusability is permitted in case of the disk so the reading operation is non destructive but if a user want to write a new data then the existing data is erased from the disk and new data is recorded two varieties are available one is the floppy disk the second one is the hard disk if you observed here a spindle can be there in this a collection of magnetic disk can be available as a pack and can be connected on both sides with the read write head so these concentric circuits can be referred as track and the tracks can be divided into parts those can be called as sectors what is floppy disk these are the small removable disks that are plastic coated with magnetic recording material floppy disks are generally 3.5 inch in size and can hold that a storage capacity can be 1.44 mb of data they are very portable and the portable storage device which can be used reused many number of times floppy disks are commonly used to move files between different computers 
to my whenever migration of data is required between the devices then the floppy disk can be used the main disadvantage of floppy disk is that they can be damaged easily and therefore are not reliable so how the data can be recorded on this magnetic disk with the help of tracks so the in concentric circles these circles can be referred as track the tracks can be divided into parts this part can be referred as a disk sector a cluster a cluster is the collection of sectors and this is the read write head on a single disk a single plotter on both sides the uh, data can be stored on this disk what is read write head a floppy disk drive normally has two read write heads making modern floppy disk drives as double sided drives so on both sides of the disk can be used to store the information with the help of two read write heads a head exists for each side of the disk both heads are used for reading and writing on the respective disk side head 0 and head 1 can be used to perform the read write operations on the floppy disk generally top head is located either four or eight tracks inward from the bottom head depending upon the drive type the heads are made up of soft ferrous compound with electromagnetic coils each head is composed designed with read write head centered with two tunnels erasure heads same physical assembly so in order to whenever the disk is rotating and come under the uh, read write head then uh, the touching of the head magnetizes the particular area of the disk so that the read and write operation can be perform so the floppy disk drives spin around 300 or 360 rpm two heads are spinning uh, spring loaded and physically grip the disk small pressure this pressure does not present excessive friction how these disk can be rotated means a motor called head actuator moves the head mechanism the heads can move in and out over the surface of the disk in the straight line to position themselves over various tracks if the track is come under the head then only the read write operation can be uh, possible the heads move in and out tangibly to the tracks that they record on the disk how the recording method can be done the first method is the tunnel erasure as the track is laid down by the read write head the trailing tunnel erasure head forces the data to be present only within the specific narrow tunnel on the each track straddle erasure means in this method read write and the eraser heads do recording and erasing at the same time so the erasing of the existing data and writing of the new data can be performed parallelly in case of straddle eraser head alignment alignment is the process of placement of the heads with respect to the track that they must read and write whenever the track comes under the read write head then only the read write operation can be possible that is uh, with the head alignment The second variety is the hard disk drive. A hard disk drive or fixed disk is a data storage device that uses magnetic storage to store and retrieve digital information using one or more rigid rapidly rotating disk coated with magnetic material. So this is the generally the hard disk so it is collection of the plotters so all these are the plotters all these can be connected with a spindle 
and here each and both sides of this plotter the read write heads can be located to perform the read write operation so here the hard disk drive is a fixed disk of data storage device that uses magnetic storage to store and retrieve digital information using one or more rigid rapidly rotating disk coated with magnetic material the platters are paired with magnetic heads so on both sides of the platter the heads can be placed so two side the data can be stored on these platters and usually arranged on a moving actuator arm which read and write data to the platter surfaces data is accessed in a random access manner so from any location of the disk the data can be accessed hard disk drives are type of non volatile storage retaining stored data even when powered off also the hard drive is typically capable of storing more data than any other drive so the storage capacity is high in the case of hard disk drives but its size can vary depending on the type of the drive and its sizes older hard disk drives storage size several hundred megabytes to several gigabytes but nowadays the hard disk can be stored several hundred gigabytes to the terabytes so the storage capacity is very high in case of hard disk drive next variety is the cd ram the compact disk read only memory these are made up of reflective materials cd rom is written during the process of manufacturing by high power laser beams so with the help of laser beams the data can be written the storage density is very high storage cost is very low and access time is relatively fast so here each disk is approximately 4 and 1/2 inches in diameter and can hold 600 mb of data the cd ram can be cannot be used to write or make changes into the data contained in it special softwares are required to perform the write operation what is the advantages of this cd ram the formats are well standardized and the technology is stable this ensures a high degree of compatibility the information density is high so large volumes of information can be stored on the cd ram but the cost of information storage can be very low so it is an inexpensive uh, medium of storage the disks are easy to store easy to transport and easy to mail the data random access of information is possible and these systems are very flexible to use and the last category of auxiliary memory is the optical disk so optical disk is made up of a rotating disk which is coated with thin reflective material to record data on the optical disk a laser beam is required and by using these laser beam with the spinning of the disk whenever the surface is uh, touched with this laser beam the read write operations can be performed laser beam is turned on and off at varying rates due to this tiny holes are burnt onto the metal coating along with the tracks whenever these laser beam touches the surfaces it can make the tiny holes those are referred as pits using these pits the read write operation can be performed when data stored on the optical disk is to be read a less powerful laser beam is focused on the disk surface so with the help of laser technology the read and write operation can be performed next you have to focus on the what are the major features of this optical disk the storage capacity of these devices is tremendous but the accessing speed is also very fast the biggest drawback of optical disk is that um, disk is that it is a permanent storage device 
a data once written cannot be erased. So, updation of data can be difficult. So, therefore, it is a only used as a read-only storage medium. A next variety is the flash memories. Flash memory is a non-volatile form of electronic data storage. As a result, it is having many areas where short and medium term data storage is needed. Flash memory technology is visible in many forms like USB memory sticks, camera memories uh, and memory cards, SD memory cards, all are various varieties of the flash memories. So, these will provide the extensive memory for the user, uh, not only the apart from the primary memory. And they can use it to perform quick accessing of the data. Some devices are supported for random access uh, of data also. But the storage uh, uh, cost uh, here is very less for the axillary memory when compared to the primary memory. So, we have to compare uh, the primary memory or the secondary or axillary memory. So, here the primary memory is generally referred as main memory or the internal memory. The secondary memory can be generally referred as external memory or axillary memory. Data is directly accessed by the processing unit. Why? Because there is a direct connection with the CPU with the primary memory. Data is first transferred to the main memory and then it can be available for processing by the CPU in case of secondary storage. That's why before execution of the program, the program that is stored in the secondary storage can be loaded into the primary memory. Next difference is semiconductor chips are used to store the information in primary memory. But in case of this magnetic optical uh, disks are used to store the information in the secondary memory. Just now we discussed varieties of disk, floppy disk, magnetic disk, optical disk. So these devices are used to store the information in the axillary memory or secondary memory. Next is information stored is temporary and can be lost when there is a sudden power cut or power interruption. So, this primary memory is volatile in nature, but the secondary memory is non-volatile in nature. Data operated are stored in a uniform manner in case of primary memory, but not in a uniform uh, fashion in case of secondary memory. Primary memory devices are more expensive than secondary storage devices. Here, these are less expensive. The storage capacity is also high in case of secondary storage. Nature of parts of primary memory varies. RAM volatile in nature, ROM non-volatile. But a little slow in interacting with the microprocessor. So, the speed can be, access speed can be low in case of secondary storage devices. Primary memory has limited storage capacity, but secondary memory can store bulk amount of data on a single unit, having tremendous storage capacity in case of secondary storage or axillary memory. Examples of primary memory is RAM, ROM, CACHE, etc. Examples of secondary memory is magnetic tape, floppy disk, optical disk, flash memories, all these are various varieties of the secondary storage devices. So, in this video, we discussed about what is the axillary memory, what are various categories and what are the features of the axillary memory storage and we made a comparison with the primary memory, the axillary memory. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.